Hi, Christian Chudo here, academyofphotography.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about time priority mode in photography. We are going, in this tutorial, we're going to learn the time priority mode on your camera. Starting with this instance, we're going to take one small step at a time and play with only one setting until you are able to understand it and control it completely. We are going, we are going to see a few examples and reach a conclusion. In this case, what is time priority and how it works, uh, why we should use it and when, and what shutter speed to select in which situation. Time priority is the setting of your camera when you can choose how long to expose an image and uh, let the camera choose the other two settings of the triangle uh, of exposure, ISO and aperture. The ISO setting can be also locked and the only one variable will be the aperture. You can switch to time priority mode by dialing the settings control on your camera on TV symbol. Depending on your camera, it might be slightly different, but I'm sure you'll find it in your camera manual, if not already obvious. Why choose time priority mode? Telling the camera how long to expose is useful in mainly two situations. One is freezing the action and second uh, is uh, night photography. First of all, freezing the action for action shots or moving objects. You might be in a situation where either the camera moves or the subject moves. You need to make sure you have the shortest uh, time exposure in order to stop the moving and have a sharp image. The faster the action goes, the shorter the time you need to let the light on the sensor. The general rule of thumb is a thousandth of a second to five hundredth of a second for a very fast moving object. For just normal situation with moving people, normally two fiftieth of a second, a hundred twenty fifth or a hundredth of a second will do just fine. Times slower than nineteenth of a second will start to show some blur. Uh, long exposure, the second uh, situation you would choose time uh, priority is long exposure in low light and night photography for special effects. There are many situations where there's not enough light and you need uh, to expose for longer to allow the sensor to get some light. Also night photography, uh, the long exposure can have spectacular effects with the long uh, light moving trails. Just word of advice, every time you expose more than 19th of a second, you will need a tripod. You'll never be able to have a steady camera, even if I keep other photographers pretending they have a steady uh, hand and they can actually shoot a sharp image uh, slower than 19th of a second. What time settings you can choose uh, in time priority mode? Well, you can go from increments to from 8 thousandths of a second six thousandths of a second, four thousandths of a second, uh, you can go in increments slower and slower and slower until you reach a second, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, four seconds, up to 30 seconds. A normal camera will uh, allow you to expose for 30 seconds in time priority mode. Longer than that you will need to switch on manual, basically that is the bulb mode. Now uh, I'm going to show you a few exercises, I'm going to move on to my computer to show you the exercises I've done just to prove how the camera reacts. We just uh, jumped on the computer where I uh, would like to show you the uh, exercises of uh, the best exercise how you can learn by yourself how to control the time priority. Basically what I've done is uh, took a bunch of pictures and, and tested the time priority setting from the fastest uh, shutter speed to the slowest. Uh, all these images have been taken in full sunlight in midday and it shows just normal garden hose with a strong water stream. The shorter the time setting, the more clear you can see the drops. The camera settings are time priority mode, obviously. ISO is on automatic, so you don't have to worry about it and the camera will choose the aperture by itself. So in this image we just started 80, uh, 8 thousandths of a second, you can see the drops. Of course the drops are not very clear here, but the water stream is quite strong. Just continuing uh, with the next image, 6 thousandths of a second, not a big deal of a difference. Uh, 4 thousandths of a second, 3 thousandths of a second, 2 thousandths of a second, we're starting to see a little bit of blur. Um, 1,500th of a second, 1,000th uh, of a second, 
and moving on 750 all the increments and you will see the slower the time uh, the time setting the more uh, trail we're gonna see and the less the, 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 the more blurry the water becomes this is 250th of a second and this is 180th of a second about this 180 uh, and 125 I would take images for a normal shot where people are moving of course this is a very strong uh, water stream but as you can see 125th of a second 125th of a second already we see uh, the trails of the movement moving on uh, just a note that the separate uh, the separate drops are quite clear is we can say it's clear I mean we can still still see the individual drops now from now on 19th of a second I usually don't shoot uh, slower than uh, 125th of a second of uh, starting now 19th of a second I would definitely need a tripod so moving on as you can as we can uh, move to the slower and slower the water stream becomes more and more blurry and it will give eventually that nice effect but that's a different tutorial from now on the camera has reached its limitation the, sh the smallest aperture and the fastest ISO so from now on the camera stopped uh, being able to compensate for a normal exposure and the image will become uh, overexposed this is what happens so this is just for illustration purposes we're gonna move to the night shot so I took all these these images on a bridge and just for illustration pro, uh, purposes how time time setting will will act I started again with eight thousandths of a second in this image you'll see the camera is actually limited on the other way so the ISO is the biggest the largest 3200 and the aperture is the widest in this case the lens has a wide aperture 2.8 8 thousandths of a second we don't see anything moving six thousandths of a second six thousand pick a little bit of detail 1500 one thousand of us of a second 750 500 uh, 350 250 from 250 the camera is starting to pick up a little bit of detail uh, again ISO is the at maximum size and the aperture is the biggest so the camera is keen on grabbing as much light as possible now 1 80th of a second we can see the, the cars still underexposed for the, the normal night scene but 1 80th of a second it shows you clear cars cars are in movement 1 25th of a second I can see still the, the cars very clear 1 19th of a second the cars I'm not sure if you notice they're becoming slightly blurry because they don't have much speed this is again 19th of a second 19th of a second just three shots 16th of a second we are definitely starting to see a bit of blur and the cars have uh, starting to have very very short light trails uh, moving 45th of a second not a very good example this one is not a good example either 30th of a second as you can see a little bit of uh, trails this is just to prove a point this is still this is 20th of a second definitely the cars are becoming blurry so moving on 15th of a second definitely we're starting to pick up light trails the size of the light trails is given by the distance of the car going uh, for a 15th of a second and the slower we can get the longer the light trails so as you can see here here six of a second there's few meters so the cars are traveling you know reasonably 50 k's an hour moving on we're starting to have the cars disappearing well this is the third of a second a third of a second and the light rails are becoming longer this is half a second this is three quarters of a second the cars are basically disappearing and we are leftovers only with the uh, light rails now this is one second and a half as you can see the light rails are becoming longer and longer this is how long it takes for a car to take to to cover this distance within one and a half seconds from now on two seconds uh, three seconds four seconds and we're starting to get that spectacular look with the light rails that everyone is looking after and as you can see those cars were actually standing there that's why they appear blurry but if they would be in motion they would not appear at all for example in this in this one you don't we don't see any cars and 
and we ended up with 15 seconds and this is 20 seconds and 30 seconds as you can see in the last few few images the lighting level in this scene is is constant and that is because the camera is uh, adjusting the other settings to have a proper exposure so the longer we can get the f-stop the aperture gets smaller and the ISO gets also smaller this is ISO 100 the aperture is f16 unfortunately 30 seconds is the limit of the camera can get us and this is where we stop from now on we just need to time to switch on the bulb mode settings but that's a subject to a different tutorial in conclusion as observed in the exercises the time priority mode is the choice when you need to action uh, to freeze the action or for night long exposure as a professional photographer i choose to use time priority in daylight photography within decent levels of light in between 500th of a second and 125th as mentioned before slower than 90th of a second i would need a tripod before i give you a homework to do i just want to tell you a little story when i was in the primary school we had a geography teacher who would actually not teach us any subjects will never tell us anything but she would request us to look at the maps of various countries in our manual and uh, try to come up with a story and uh, to observe the cities mountains rivers and so on as students we had to use our brains by exercising and discovering ourselves rather than being told what uh, what is where I remember to this day the maps of various countries and uh, by experimenting yourself rather than taking information given by others. This is absolutely the best way and the fastest way to learn anything about everything. So in our exercise I'm going to propose you to do three similar exercises with the one I, I just uh, showed you. One in medium light, one in full sunlight and one in low light at night time. Take for each one of the tests a full set of images from the fastest to the slowest and test uh, movement or long exposure subjects. Practicing by yourself is the best and the fastest way to learn and understanding your camera. This method will give you results and you'll be happy with and will help you understand what you have done. If you come up with great images by chance feel free to share them with us. After the three sets of exercises, you should know what time setting and time priority is and which shutter speed uh, is best for each lighting condition. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and now you are keen to learn some more. Get, out, get outside, take some shots and uh, until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting. Thank you for watching.